Okay, the Cybertruck launched. Massive event in Texas uh, where people were driving around in it. And the headlines, absolutely ridiculous, ludicrous, too big, too dangerous. This is stupid. Design is crazy. It's like a kid drawing it. This is so... Who needs 0-60 in 2.6 seconds? This is a disaster. Dave takes it on, as always. Ignores all this and does his own investigations. So here, I'm going to have a look at what's actually happening. Is it too big? And is it ever going to appear in the UK? OK, well, you can't just rubbish the whole thing. You have to look at what's being rubbish. So I think we'll start off with the price. $100,000 for a pickup truck. Just crazy money. However... My initial investigations found that even a basic, really basic, pickup truck in the States is now in the forty to £50,000 range. A lot more than I would have thought. The manufacturers, to try and make more money, have been uh, build, building these up, building them out, making them oh, much more luxurious, everything. And the average price of a pickup truck now is somewhere around about $80,000. Top of the range pickup truck, these are petrol and diesel ones, are over a hundred thousand pounds and really top models about hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This is crazy. So the Cybertruck hundred thousand dollars is not that much out of the market it's aimed at. But what about performance? This can do 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. It can now drag a Porsche 911 while towing a trailer with a Porsche 911 on it. Crazy! Who wants that? Well, the reality is that all of the existing petrol and diesel uh, pickup trucks on the market today all have top of the range performance models, GT models. And these are the ones that are in the hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar range. And so there is a massive market for not only the pickup, not only ultra luxurious, but also for a bit of performance. They don't like hanging about. So, you have to ask the question, the price is right about in the middle, but who is it meant for? What's the market? If you look at your rough, tough Texas truckers, uh, probably not them, I see. But, go with the other extreme, Lamborghini owners, the Lamborghini Urus. It's a $200,000 SUV. It's a four or five seater. It's a little bit smaller than the uh, Cybertruck. Turns out it's a huge amount slower. So for performance, why spend $200,000 on a Lamborghini when you could get a performance Cybertruck? You don't need a pickup, but hey, you could be buying this for the performance. One of Ferrari's latest cars, the Purosang, pure blood I think that is, uh, launching at £303,000. And they reckon there's a market for that. The Porsche Cayenne. This is a big SUV, starts at 75,000, goes up to 135,000. There is a substantial market for people with money who want performance. And all of the cars I've mentioned are slower than the Cybertruck Beast. So forget a pickup, just buy it for the performance. And you'll find inside, instead of a cramped low car, which you, you struggle to get in and out as you get older, uh, the Cybertruck is absolutely really roomy and spacious inside. You step up into it, a fantastic view over the road. So, truckers, well, a lot of them, as I've said, like the performance model. So, they will like the, some of them will like the, the appearance, and they'll like the performance. Other truckers, they'll like the performance, but... Tell you what, I can actually live with the appearance. There's so much going for it. It's got so much. It's got the steer-by-wire now that, unlike most trucks, which, you know, hand-over-hand -hand steering, the new one is uh, steer-by-wire. And what that means is that your steering wheel, yoke, whatever it is, uh, isn't actually connected to the wheels. It's like a joystick on a car. With the Cybertruck, that is full lock. When you're going slow, when you're going fast, that is a very gentle correction. 
And being four wheel steering, the computer works out what the rear wheel should be doing. So if you're here, you are manoeuvring at very slow speeds in a car park, that will not only get you full lock at the front, it'll get the rear wheels going in the opposite direction. It's going to be an absolute dream to drive. Uh, a lot of the um, early people said that, the early test drivers said that it's easier, easier to drive than a Model 3. Wow! And it's a beast. So you're going to get some people and they are going to be saying, look, hate the appearance might grow into it but probably not but everything else the performance the space the style the technology and the price this is a must-have vehicle so for the first time in in motoring history you're gonna have some people saying i hate the appearance but i gotta have one that's never happened before cybertruck is unique OK, I come from Cornwall. I spent over 30 years living in Cornwall. And people say to me, yeah, but Cornwall, these narrow Cornish lanes with the Cornish hedges. Uh, for those who don't know, by the way, a Cornish hedge is a stone wall uh, covered in shrubbery, so you can't see it's stone. Uh, catch many people out. Anyway, uh, so how will these do down in Cornwall? Well, stupid, stupid question. It's not going to make it. But then uh, you realise two things. Those Cornish lanes, they're, they're occupied by tractors. And tractors are massive compared to the Cybertruck. Way, way bigger than my car, but they are very, very big vehicles. Cybertruck, relatively small. And locally, when I was living down there, the road between a place called Moreland Smith, a small village in the middle of nowhere, and Falmouth, which was the nearest big town, um, narrow country lanes, really tight, and the trees met overhead, so it was like a tunnel. Um, they run a double-decker bus down there for the school kids every day, twice a day. So a double-decker bus going through these Cornish lanes, brushing the trees above it, brushing the hedges either side, twice a day, delivering school kids from Morn and Smith and surrounding villages into the big schools in Falmouth. So it's maybe not such a ridiculous statement after all. But the other thing that gives me some hope that we might see them on the roads today is the scale of them. You see, they launched this four years ago. Now, just out of interest, um, Elon was questioned as to why it took four years to develop it. And he gave such a matter-of-fact answer, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. He said... Just after announcing it in 2019, we got hit by COVID. And instantly, China shut down. That's their biggest manufacturing centre in China. The supply chain also shut down. All their factories shut down. And it was an absolute nightmare trying to get parts, batteries and components and raw materials for their existing model range, which at the time was the Y and the 3. They had nothing, no spare capacity, no spare parts to launch a new vehicle. So Elon said very simply, we just put it on the side. We concentrated on making the ones we could make, which we'd already sold. We had advance orders for them, paid for uh, with a big deposit. So the Cybertruck was just not on our list of things to do. Now, situation has changed an awful lot. Uh, all the Covid scares gone away. Uh, Covid's still around, but it's no longer such an issue. Uh, all of the factories and countries and everything, they're shut down, now back open again. Supply chains are getting back into normal swing of things. Uh, products are available, parts are available. And so now is the time to launch it. But interesting to note that in 2019, when they did the first pre-production models, they were bigger than what they launched on November the 30th. On November the 30th, the production version is actually 5% smaller than the pre-production versions. Now, don't know why. Uh, it's not for me to say. Uh, many of you could guess, but don't know. But it is smaller. So, if you can just make it 5% smaller, maybe make it 10% smaller. And that might be ideal for the UK roads. I suspect that will happen. And I'll tell you why. Because already on our roads, you can buy some massive, massive 
uh, SUVs, designed for towing caravans and the like. Things like the Sang Yong Musso, well, that's the largest SUV on the roads today. Uh, and that is a mere 12 inches less shorter than the Cybertruck. So, my prediction, we will see them. I think the demand in America is going to be absolutely massive for a couple of years, but then the, the attraction, the appeal of supplying them into totally new markets like Australia, like the UK, like Europe, uh, is going to become far too much, and they will just start making a slightly smaller model for these markets. Anyway, that's my prediction. A few of mine have come true recently, so let's see what this one does. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave. If you have liked this video, please subscribe. It makes such a difference to us. It does affect the algorithm that YouTube uses to decide who to show this video to, how many people and, and where. And it makes a difference to us for subscriptions. It costs nothing to subscribe. Just click the button. Uh, but it makes a big difference to the channel. Thanks very much.